When you take standardized tests on organic chemistry, like with the MCAT or the PCAT, sometimes they have questions related to this business of hybridization. So these slides talk about what you generally need to know to answer those questions. Um, this topic has to do with how we explain theoretically what we know to be true from experiment, which is that when carbon makes single bonds, uh, it has a tetrahedral geometry. When we have alkenes making double bonds, that involves this trigonal planar. And then when, we're, when we have triple bonds, that involves this linear arrangement. Um, and so hybridization is, is just a way to kind of reconcile uh, what we know in experiment with what uh, theory tells us about how bonding occurs. So we're going to talk about each of these three cases and how uh, the type of bonding correlates to these three shapes as well as these bond angles. And we consider that when carbon bonds to anything, it's a matter of some of its atomic orbitals overlapping with uh, atomic orbitals of another atom. And if we go back to the configuration for a carbon atom by itself, that's what you see here on the left. Uh, carbon has six electrons total, but four of those are in the second energy level here. Those are the valence electrons. And uh, in an isolated carbon, we wouldn't expect it to make four bonds because there's only two electrons here represented by the red arrows. There's only two of them that are unpaired. And when bonds form, we think of it as pairs of electrons. Uh, so we would only expect perhaps two bonds to form if carbon were, were as we see it over here with these uh, box diagrams. Well, hybridization imagines that as carbon makes bonds to other things, two things happen. First thing is one of these 2s electrons gets promoted. Uh, it gets shoved up into that empty 2p orbital, and each of those orbitals can hold a total of two electrons, but it would be nice if they started off with just one apiece. And in addition to moving that electron from the 2s to the 2p, we also mathematically mix all four of these orbitals. So we create four new orbitals that all have the same energy and refer to them as 2sp3. So we have hybridized those orbitals. We relocated an electron, but we've mixed together the s with the three p's. And that's what this notation means. Uh, this orbital is made of one part s, three part p orbitals, so we call it sp3. And now we have four orbitals that are all uh, uh, half filled with one electron. The one s orbital stays as it was. So now we can expect this thing to make four bonds because we've got four unpaired electrons. So if that carbon wants to bond to four other atoms, uh, it's set up to do so. Now, in terms of pictures, the orbitals at the top are the unhybridized atomic orbitals, the 2s orbital and a carbon atom, and then these are the three 2p orbitals. They're all mutually perpendicular, and again, each of those four can hold two electrons if they're filled. And they would normally be superimposed on a single origin, but they would uh, be hard to distinguish if they did that, so they just draw them separately. Well, when we hybridize these, again, we're mixing all of these together, and mathematically that leads to these shapes you see in blue. Each of those is an sp3 hybridized orbital. They are um, approximately the size and shape you see, but notice they're pointing in directions that correspond to this tetrahedral shape. And so that's really why hybridization is thought to be uh, an important and, and, and true interpretation of what's going on because it correctly leads to the idea that we do get the tetrahedral shape when carbon makes four bonds um, to four other atoms. And this shows a complete picture of methane where the electron in each of these four uh, sp3 orbitals is overlapping with the one electron that each of those hydrogens would provide. And so we know methane to have those 109 degree bond angles and to have this tetrahedral shape because the hydrogens are all at the corners of this pyramid structure that we call a tetrahedron. And so that hybridization works for that. You can also explain what's going on in alkenes where we have carbon-carbon double bonds. The difference here is that we only uh, are going to mix the 2s with two of the 2p orbitals and leave the third 2p orbital alone. So you can see that's what they've done here. We've moved one electron from the 2s 
to the vacant 2p orbital, but now notice we've just mixed three of those. It's got one S and two of the P's, so we call it sp2 hybridized, and there's still a, an electron in the unhybridized p orbital. Well, if you have graphs of the sp2 orbitals, uh, they look like these green things. They uh, point to the corners of a triangle, and they are all in the same plane, which makes them different from the sp3, and it, uh, again, correctly correlates to what shapes we know are true when we look at, at carbon carbon double bonds in their immediate environment. And so again, here are the unhybridized orbitals that we're mixing. Uh, not only does the shape change when you hybridize them, but the direction that they point change. And that's another problem with these unhybridized orbitals. They're 90 degrees apart, and we know that carbon doesn't make bonds with 90 degree angles. And so the, the change in the angle is also a big deal about this, uh, this theory here. So here is our uh, ethene, the, the simplest alkene here, and those green bonds are represented by these green sp2 orbitals. So uh, for each carbon, they are, are overlapping with each other with one of those orbitals, and then they overlap with two hydrogens apiece. Now that double bond, that extra bond, that comes into play from what was left over with that unhybridized p orbital. And that's shown here in the bottom left here. Each carbon has one electron in that leftover p orbital, and so they can also overlap to make a two electron bond. <clears throat> now in this final structure, what they're distinguishing is the kind of overlap you have with the sp2 orbitals versus the kind of overlap we have with the unhybridized orbitals. Uh, this is a little sigma uh, at the bottom where that green bond is, and a sigma bond is resulting from two orbitals overlapping head to head. So they're just kind of like crashing into one another. Whereas what's labeled as a pi bond, that's what we call the type of bond that results from sideways overlap. These two orbitals are kind of near one another, uh, but they're overlapping in a, in a different way than, than if they were coming at each other head to head. Um, that makes this bond, this pi bond, a little bit weaker than the sigma bond because there's not as much overlap here as there is up here with the sp2. And, um, and so those bonds can be distinguished. And it is true that with a double bond, it's not twice as strong as a single bond, even though it is stronger. Uh, the pi bond helps, but it is a weaker type of bond. But again, we get the expected 120 degree bond angles and uh, when looking at the two carbons, the, the things that are attached in their immediate neighborhood are all in the same plane. So we get that trigonal planar shape to it. Finally, here's the other type of hybridization. This is going to explain what's going on with uh, alkynes with a carbon-carbon triple bond. Uh, same setup for the uh, unhybridized carbon at the top. Same deal with promoting one of the 2s electrons to the 2p uh, orbital. But now when we hybridize, we're only mixing 1s with 1p. So we just call it sp hybridization. Now we're leaving two electrons in these other orbitals that are unhybridized. Well, the three-dimensional shape of those sp hybridized orbitals are what you see here, 180 degrees apart. That means they have a linear geometry. And... Uh, Again, that they can overlap with other atoms and form bonds, and two carbons can overlap orbitals with each other as well. Uh, but we're not mixing as much as what we did in the last two examples. Here's the complete picture of a alkyne, ethyne in this case. And so, again, you have one sigma bond resulting from the sp orbitals overlapping, uh, the carbons bonding to each other, but now they only uh, are bonded to one hydrogen apiece. And that is a, a straight linear geometry. Now, we've got two unhybridized orbitals here that are making pi bonds, and so uh, we can kind of see how that works when we put it all together. When we draw this triple bond down here, it's not three equivalent bonds. One of those three is that sigma bond in purple. Uh, that represents the, uh, the, the sp hybridized orbital. And now we've got two pi bonds uh, corresponding to these two overlaps here. So try to color code this one. This lobe here goes with the one at the bottom. 
So it's kind of cutting its way right down the middle of that uh, molecule. And if I change colors here, uh, I can show you here the other pi bond is the top, or I guess one half of this, uh, this uh, orbital overlapping with the other one. And of course it's obscured because it goes behind the one that's existing there. So uh, you've got two sideways overlapping pi bonds uh, along with the sp hybridized bond. So that gives you a total of uh, a triple bond and then one hydrogen on e each end. So here's kind of a summary of, of what I was showing you here. And, and again, the terminology kind of equates to one of these three possibilities. When you have four single bonds, the shape around carbon is tetrahedral, meaning you've got these 109 degree bond angles meaning it's sp3 hybridized. So all of that goes together. Uh, for alkenes, where you have um, a double bond, that geometry is called trigonal planar, meaning all the atoms are in the same plane, uh, 120 degree angles. And again, that's sp2 hybridization there. And then finally, if you only have sp hybridization, that means you're going to have a triple bond. Uh, one of the bonds is that sp uh, orbital overlapping with a fellow sp orbital on a neighboring carbon and that leaves behind two pi bonds to make in addition. Uh, so these three types of hybridization kind of uh, again correctly explain what we know to be true about how the shapes of these types of uh, compounds are, uh, and how their shapes correlate to all of this stuff.